This is The Wheel Weaves, a Wheel of Time podcast with no spoilers. Welcome listeners, I'm your host Annie, and I'm the first time reader who's going through this 15 book series chapter by chapter. As always, there are no spoilers past the chapter we are covering, and that means it's totally safe for first time readers. I'm joined by my co-host Brett, who's a longtime fan of the series, and he's acting as my tour guide on this journey. Before we get into things today, we just want to thank and welcome Michael Ram to the Wheel Weaves Patreon team. Thank you so much for your support and your generosity. You're really helping us to make our podcast that much better. We also want to talk about how this is our first episode to be released in June. And over here at the Wheel Weaves, every quarter, we donate $1 for every patron we have over at patreon.com slash the Wheel Weave podcast to the Mayo Clinic in honor of Robert Jordan. And at the time of recording this, we have 67 patrons. And so we are going to be donating $67 to the Mayo Clinic and support all of the wonderful work that they do over there. We also really want to thank all of our patrons who make this possible. In this episode, we're going to be talking about chapters 38 and 39 of The Great Hunt. Yeah, so 38, we have Practice. Yeah. And 39, Flight from the White Tower. Yeah. Yeah, and these are, you know, kind of a little bit slower chapters. Yeah. But I'm excited for them because it's like what you think it is versus what it actually is versus like what it looks like it is. So yeah. I got like, some opinions. Yeah. And I'm I curious some, to hear those. I got some theories. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that's the other side is like, what are you speculating? We're on dark friend watch tonight. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm I thought you might say there. that. So yeah, it's a hundred percent dark friend watch. So yeah. And that's why I said like, what does it look like versus what it actually is? So yeah. we'll, we'll talk about it. Well, the thing is, I don't know what it actually is, and it drives me crazy. And it's really funny because I love the fact that you had to stop reading at the end of these two chapters because, like, the, the next two chapters, continues. it clearly continues. It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. I hate that you love that. That's so mean. It's fun for me. No, yeah. it's mean. So I've got a good fun fact for today because it's been a while since we did anything to do with, like, the statistical analysis of the book. And since we're getting to the end of The Great Hunt, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that stuff. And it's fun to compare The Eye of the World to The Great Hunt. Okay. Yeah. So a couple things. We always talk about the amount of perspectives, and that's kind of what I want to zero in on for today. So in The Eye of the World, thinking way long time ago when we read that book, Mm -hmm. there was 53 chapters and two prologues, and there were only seven unique perspectives. So we only got to see seven points of view. And in The Great Hunt, in fewer chapters, there are 15 unique perspectives. Really? Yeah. So it over doubles the amount of perspectives you get to see. Well, it's interesting too, because we also get more split chapters. Yeah. Like where there's more perspectives in one single chapter. Yeah. We get 21 more different like splits actually. Oh. So quite a few different. Yeah. And then the other side of that is how much does Rand take up? In the books. Right. So I had to figure that out I actually out still felt like it was a lot in this book. There was. And this is kind of funny because in The Eye of the World, he had 44 out of the 59 perspectives. So it was about 75% was Rand. Yeah. And he had about 80% of the word count. So it was kind of like on point. Okay. 75 to 80%. Sure, yeah. Now in The Great Hunt, he had 33 out of the 81 perspectives. Oh, that's way less. Way less. 40% of them. But he still had 53% of the words. So Rand is over half the book, but he is under in the amount of points of view. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, because some of the points of view were like a paragraph. Yeah. Or half a page or three pages. Like it was less, you know, from the per- from different perspectives. So yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, yeah. cool. So there you go. Good to know. Okay, so getting into chapter 38, practice. Yeah. We get into an Egwene chapter. Yeah, we're back in the White Tower. Right. Okay. So last time, Rand and crew just like jumped across the world in like three seconds, but it's actually three months because they used a dumb portal stone and everyone is super messed up and saw a lot of crazy things along the way. They did see some crazy stuff, man. (laughs) Oh boy. Okay. Okay. And then so the last time we saw Nynaeve and Egwene... Nynaeve had just become an accepted, and Egwene had made friends with Elaine and Min. Yeah, and they had, like, just arrived at the White Tower. Yeah, and just before we jump in here, 
the chapter symbol, I sort of skipped over that because it's just the flame of Tarvalin. Yeah, because we're at the tower. Because so, we're at the tower. Yeah, okay. makes sense. So Egwene is just sitting in her little novice room, juggling some light balls of Yeah, energy. and she's doing it against the rules. Yeah, she's not really allowed to do this without supervision. And Nynaeve doesn't count. Yeah. Because she's too baby of an accepted yeah, to, she's su- like, to supervise. Yeah, it kind of seems like she's not like a real accepted, even though she's an accepted. There's yeah. still like some... I think that she's just too young of an accepted. Like she's not far enough in her training to be someone who supervises. Yeah. And I, I think that all accepted when they first become probably can't supervise novices. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. So... Nynaeve is in this room with her and they aren't really speaking to each other. Nynaeve is just sort of muttering to herself and Egwene thinks about how much she loves channeling but how it scares her how much she wants to channel and how much she loves it. Yeah and we've kind of heard that like the more you use it the more you want to use it. It's tempting. It's cool. When and... it fills you with light. And like what we got with Rand was that he felt alive. Yeah. When yeah. he was channeling. And... and like everything else is dull. And yeah. Same thing here. Yeah. So we also get that she has been here for 13 weeks now. Yeah. We get a time jump. Okay. So we just skipped like th- three months of her novice training. Right. And like Nynaeve's accepted being that way. Right. So yeah. That's pretty huge. And it sounds like Rand and crew jumped about 13 weeks in the future. Yeah, it definitely seems like obviously (laughs) a little bit intentional. It seems like we're lining up. Yeah. Approximately. And this was was something I was really worried about was that we weren't going to get an actual like what time it is here. Yeah, and like what time, what day, whatever it might be. Yeah. So it looks like it might be around that amount, but we don't actually for sure know. Yeah. Because it was kind of hinted at last chapter that it was like four months that they've skipped. Oh, and right, he- four months. Yeah, and here it's like 13 weeks, so it's like not quite not four quite months. Not quite four months. But we might just be backpedaling a little bit so we can like catch up. Maybe, because- maybe, maybe. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you're right. In my little summary, I said three months. Yeah, I yeah, said yeah. that they jumped ahead three months, but it was four. They think. They think. And it's like there's it's no... autumn. Yeah, they have no real way of telling, but... Right. Yeah. okay. So Min is also in the room, and she's sitting on a little stool and tells Egwene that... Else was making calf eyes at Galad. Yeah, ooh. And Egwene acts like she doesn't even care. She says, I don't even care. Yeah. (laughs) And Min sort of apologizes and says, you know, everyone wants to look at him, especially with his shirt off. Yeah. And we have the Aes Sedai being a little bit predatory again. All the Aes Sedai, like, gather in the yard while he's training to ogle him. Yeah. You know, it's a little bit sad. You, you, you skipped over it there, but it had said that Egwene has like made friends with Elaine and Min, but Nynaeve has made no friends at all in the, in the accepted. accepted. Oh, it's like I'm Aw. not surprised. I know, but it's like a little bit hurts my heart. Does it? Yeah. Maybe, Maybe she, she needs could... to take a social skills class because making friends is it just easy? Yeah, it should be. If you're a regular person, I feel bad for Nynaeve for not having friends. She's awful to everyone. <laughs> yeah, but She's you know. She's not nice. That's, that's... You make friends when you're a kind person. Sometimes. And you don't <laughs> insult everyone you meet. Well, I disagree. <laughs> no, I am not surprised and I don't feel bad for her. Okay, fine. But let's go back to Galad being beautiful. Right. So Egwene giggles about how good looking he is. And Min reminds her about how, quote, good he is like he is so good that he will hurt somebody that he cares about just to do what's quote right yeah like for the greater good and we've heard this a couple times from elaine and gawain way back in camelin yeah about him being like an overly good person yeah he's a snitch for sure (laughs) but this is like coming from min it does sound like a very definitive statement of galad is gonna do bad things because he's he thinks too good. good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Min tells Egwene that he didn't even notice else. And he asked if Egwene was going to be out walking later. Because it turns out it's a free day for them. Yeah. And they really haven't gotten very many since she showed up. Yeah, so Galad has a little bit of a thing for Egwene. Yeah, but we already knew that. Yeah. He already asked her out. 
Yeah, and it doesn't sound like that's gone very I far. I wonder if they went for their walk. It doesn't sound like they like they did. Or but maybe they did, but then nothing happened after that. Yeah. So it's 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 hard to tell. What it also sounds like she's been kept very busy. Yeah, that's true. It's not like you have weekends off or anything like that. So. No, definitely not. So at this point, though, the door bangs open and Elaine enters. And so she rushes in, saying that the rumors are true that King Galadran is... Nope. nope. What's his name? Galadrian. Gal... What did I say? Gala blah blah. <laughs> <laughs> Flu fly. I have no idea. Whatever it was, it was wrong though. That King Galadrian... Nope. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Galadrian. Gal... Okay, I have an extra A in here. Galabrian. <laughs> Gal... Dragon. Okay. That says dragon. <laughs> <laughs> no, up here. Like, God. Gal dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. That King Galdrian is dead. Yeah. And that makes this a war of succession. Yes. And I just went, what? What did Tom do? No, yeah, because last we heard, it sounded kind of like Tom was Tom was gonna <laughs> murder the king. Yeah. And you were like, that can't happen. Yeah. But to be fair, that was a long time ago. Like, it's been 13 months. Yeah, 13 weeks. Oh, yeah. What did I... 13 months? Yeah, it's been 13 weeks. Yeah, so it's been 13 months. Oh, my God. What? (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) Galva Flynn. Okay. We're not even drinking. No, we're not. Yeah, so it's been 13 weeks. Yeah. So, like, who knows what tom did like do you think tom did this yeah oh yes like knife in the heart no or... uh-uh. i think that he plotted for this i think it took 13 weeks for him to get in close with the king okay so like he put plans in motion he played days de mar yeah somehow and yeah. like plotted the downfall of the king yeah and tom did that yeah okay that's pretty cool if he because did because his men killed dina yeah, shouldn't yeah. have killed her. No. Okay, that's pretty. That's a pretty big like prediction well, for you. He ya. left with like a I'm gonna do something look. Yeah, yeah. And then we hear he's dead. So what harm can an old gleeman do? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you put it on the table. Yeah, 100%. I really didn't think this was gonna happen. <laughs> I really har- like I predicted that there was no way Tom could actually kill the king, and then. To be fair, you don't know that Tom did kill a king. Um, this is something I'm pretty much certain about. <laughs> Okay. So, All right. Yeah. That's fun. That's good. I like yeah, that. Yeah. Well, except now Kyrian is in this like state of war because not only is Barthanis dead, but the king is dead. And those two were the ones who were like fighting for power. Yeah. So it's like, now who's gonna... And that's what civil war up. is all about, apparently. So... There you go. Yep. Min is totally unfazed by this. And we just actually completely glaze over this in the chapter. It is mentioned, and then Min just goes, "Wow, well, we're hearing all sorts of crap. Yeah. <laughs> war in Kyrian, war on Tom and Head. Apparently the false dragon has been caught in Saldea. And war then, in Tear. And then a war in Tear. Wow. Which we sort of already knew about, the Tear and Alien thing. They're always Yeah, fighting. they're always got something going on, so. Yeah. And then we also just glaze over all of that, and Elaine says that she saw Loghain in the garden crying. Yeah. I feel That's bad sad. for him. I like Logan. You do? Yeah. Okay. I don't know him at all. Yeah, you really have nothing to go on besides the fact that he was like laughing maniacally in a cage. Yeah. And then got gentled. I feel bad for him. And now he's crying. Yeah. Okay. But you don't feel bad about Nynaeve not making friends. Gosh. No. Okay. I don't understand you. Well, that's her fault, and this isn't Logan's fault. That's fair too. So. And you didn't care about Tom and the whole Owen thing. What? So. That was so long ago. So. I know, but I'm still hung up on it. Nah, I cared, but... Just not as much as you do about Loghain. I get it. Okay. Yeah, I don't personally know Owen, <laughs> so... All right. Okay, so this whole Loghain crying in the garden thing makes Egwene think about Rand. Yeah, makes sense. And she thinks about how she hasn't dreamt of him in months now, and she feels as though he's no longer there... As if he ceased to exist. Ooh. Is that because maybe for four months he just ceases to exist? Yeah, basically. It's like a blip in the pattern. Whoa. 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 Portal stone travel. Ugh, don't do it if you don't know what you're doing. Don't do it. Yeah. 
Yeah, but that's like a huge indication that that those like prophetic dreams that she seems to be having yeah. seem to be like a real thing. They're right. somehow linked. And so because now she hasn't really been dreaming of him, the other Aes Sedai who was getting her to like write down all her dreams just was like, ah, you're just missing your boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we also get that Nynaeve is all pissed off because we sort of get why Nynaeve hasn't been making any friends because some other stupid accepted called Nynaeve clumsy as a cow and half as talented and Nynaeve smacks her in the head. Yeah. yeah. Nynaeve is having a rough time. <laughs> I, I just feel like there should at least be one other person who might see eye to eye with Nynaeve. But, but Nynaeve would have to be willing to see eye to eye with anyone. Yeah, She okay. thinks she's better than even the Aes Sedai. Well, to be fair, she kind of did like throw the Amarlin seat up against the wall, even though she's like untrained. Yeah. She did do that. It's reckless. It's crazy. And, you know, in my experience, people don't just insult people and say things like you're clumsy as a cow and half as talented without being provoked. So you're telling me that Nynaeve didn't do or say anything to piss someone else off? Yep, she's completely innocent. Yeah. <laughs> no. I refuse to hear anything else about this. <laughs> no. Next subject, please. No. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> Elaine and Egwene start juggling their balls of light again together. And Nynaeve tells them to quit it and says she's going to report them if they don't stop. And Elaine says they have to practice and they want to. Yeah. But Nynaeve says... That she knows what it's like to have the power there all the time calling to you, but she's really afraid of it now. And she wishes that these girls were more afraid. Yeah. One thing that is kind of like another interesting note is we do get that definition about the one power filling Egwene with life. And it does seem like this is a confirmation that like using the one power almost enhances your senses yeah because you can like see better feel better hear better smell better like it enhances those and we did get that from rand where he was like he could, could see every blade of grass yeah, and, yeah 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 so it seems like there is some whether it's like 100 percent real or just like seemingly it kind of like pumps you up a little bit yeah so yeah and it's interesting that there are quite a few similarities between the Sidon and Sidar. Yeah, even though everyone's like, oh, it's totally different. But yeah. like, there's a no, couple similarities. No, it seems almost exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I have yet to find a difference other than the taint. Yeah. So, so all right. Yeah. Elaine and Egwene actually say that they are very scared. They're actually quite terrified of all of this. And I think that that's just like comes down to anxiety and the unknown and... Getting pushed pretty hard, it seems. They are getting pushed pretty hard. So they ask Min to read them and ask if they're going to be novices forever or if one day they will be powerful Aes Sedai. Yeah. And Min says that there is something new and she doesn't really know what, but all of a sudden she can just like sense that they're all about to be in danger. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then Elaine is like, ah, oh, that's scary. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Min, you should put on a dress. And then they just like change the topic. <laughs> yeah. Like I should be like, hey, guys, like men who can see things. Yeah. That's going to happen. And she's like, oh, man. Danger. danger. And like, ah, oh, I don't know things. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just ignore that. You know what, men? Gawain would talk to you if you didn't wear pants. Yeah. Maybe like, you should change into skirts. Yeah. And she's like, no, nah, I like my pants. You know, good for men for obviously like sticking to yeah, her guns on it. Yeah, she likes her pants. But it's these... Kind of Women. It's like, why are we skimming over this whole danger, danger, danger? Yeah. <laughs> like, do we need a do we need a code word for this or is no a danger yeah. is a pretty good one. Danger is a good one. Yeah, and just as that happens, the door bangs open, and Egwene thinks it's just the wind that's like blown it open. So she gets up to go close it, and then someone's standing there, and it's Leandrin. Whoa. Oh, okay. I was like off. Oh, Fuck. Yeah, I love these no. chapters because it's like, what? It's just like, oh my goodness. Yeah, because I was reading and I was yeah. like, is this all this chapter is? Because it's called practice. And I was like, is it th just them yep. like bitching in this room <laughs> for, you know, 15 pages? Because this is getting really dull. I mean, like we got some information, but I was like, 
Give oh, me something more. Yeah, and then you get And it. you get Leandrian. Leandrian. Okay. So Egwene is quite surprised. She had not heard that Leandrian had returned to the White Tower. Yeah. Plus, novices are sent for, not visited directly by Aes Sedai. It's a power move. Makes sense. So this is what I'm going to call sketchy fact number one. Okay, so do you have like multiple sketchy facts? Multiple. Multiple, okay. I am on high alert right now with Leandrin around because she... Is this what you meant by like... Dark, dark friend, friend watch. Alert? Okay. Dark friend watch. Okay. So... <laughs> it's like the five o'clock news. Dark friend watch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, because last time we saw Leandrin, she was in Faldara like torturing Egomar's sister. Yes. I forget her name. Uh, yeah. Amalisa, Lady Amalisa. Right. And then we saw her in the, like, dungeon. Yep. Who, and she was gonna, like, hurt Rand. What are you doing, boy? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when he's, like, scrubbing off the wall. Yeah. And then... And then Maureen comes in and she's like, what are you doing here? Yeah. And then she's like, what are you doing here? Right. And then and then we heard Moraine and Lan left, Leandrin left, and Varen left. Yes. But we didn't get, sort of, an order, and we didn't really get purpose... Yeah. We've gotten that Varen went one way to basically watch out for Rand. Yep. We got Moraine went one way to go find out some information. From the ladies. But we don't know which way Leandrin went. Yep. And... Turns out she's here now. Remember how I said there's only one possibility of somebody who sent that Drakkar? Yeah, I don't Black remember Aja. that. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, in the grassy town. I remember that Drakkar. I just don't, I didn't remember what you said about the one possibility. Black so Aja. Black Aja sent the Drakkar to. It was Leandrin. I it was already... Leandrin. Yeah, I said that. Did didn't... you say it? Yeah, okay. I did. Why do I not remember that? I don't that know. seems important. Yeah. Okay. So Leandrin sent the Drakkar to kill Moraine and Lan. Yeah. And now she's here. Yeah. But that was like three months ago. So... Yeah. But the Drakkar definitively did not kill Moraine and Lan. No. Do you think that if Leandrin sent the Drakkar, does she know that it didn't work? Yeah. She knows that it failed? Yeah. Okay. Or is she like just assuming that Maureen is dead? No, no, no. She knows. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. She knows. <laughs> All right. And we actually don't know where Maureen is or we don't. what's going on. Because yeah. it's been now a long time. So anyway, the fact that she's just showing up here is... So are you sketchy. working on the premise that Leandrin is like Black Aja? I don't know why that's shocking to you. It's just like, it's a very, it's a, like a very... I've said it from the beginning. Direct thing. I've said it literally I know, from but the like now we're getting book. down to if she's a dark friend, like if she's Black Aja, everything else in these two chapters is like way worse. Yeah. Like, okay. Okay. Then we're, let's work on this. This yeah. is like the first time that you called Celine Lanfear... Like, that was a big deal for me. Um, I don't know why you're so shocked, because when we first met Leandrin, I called her Black Aja. Yeah, but I was like, haha, okay, she's Black Aja. No, I was super being... serious about that. Okay. Because she clearly was <laughs> one of the Ajas, or one of the Aes Sedai at the Darfin Social, because she knows about these boys and she's searching for them. Okay, because she did send out all those maids. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And okay. she, like, tortured the lady, asking her about these guys. Okay. And... Now here we are Now again. she's here. Okay. Presumably sent the Drakkar. Now she's here. Yeah. Okay. Let's go with this. Yeah. I'm on the same page as you now. Oh, excellent. Okay. I had to catch you up. Yeah. So Leandrin immediately schooled Nynaeve for being here in the novice quarters. You're not allowed to have friends who are novices. <laughs> yeah. Well, she doesn't have any other friends. Yeah. <laughs> so, but she also says that it's very well that I find you here. And then she like shoes Elaine and Min away. Take a hike. Yeah. So... Then she immediately asks if these girls, these women, are from the village that the boys Moraine traveled with are from. Yeah. So that's sketchy fact number two. Okay. That she's immediately asking about these boys. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So Egwene right away goes, oh my god, is Rand okay? And Nynaeve says, well, have you heard news from them? Yeah. Like Gwen's very like more direct Ugh. with her questions and Nynaeve's like asking well, appropriate no. questions. Egwene is very emotional. Yeah. And she's not logical even in the slightest. That's kind of what I meant by like the direct like, oh, what do we got to do? Yeah, I have to tell you by the end of this chapter, Nynaeve has gained a bunch of points in my book. Okay, for asking good questions. Oh yeah, for being skeptical yeah. of this person. But again, she's like skeptical to the degree that it doesn't actually help. It doesn't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. I know. That's why it's not that many points. Okay, but like some. More than some. Egwene. More than Egwene. Okay. That's for sure. I have a fun little line that I'll point out later. Okay. So Leandrin goes, oh, you care for them. 
Good. <laughs> yeah. And then she goes, they are in danger and you might be able to help them. And I just went, okay, what? Like, yeah. That doesn't even make sense. You're not saying, you're saying that you in their position wouldn't be like, all right, let's go. Yeah. You'd be like, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go on. Yeah. So that's kind of what Nynaeve does. She wants to know how Leandra knows all of this. And Leandra says that Moraine has sent letters to the White Tower concerning them. And Moraine is worried about them and the boys. The boys are in danger. And then she sort of flips it on them and goes, do you wish to help them or leave them to their fate? Yeah. So I needed to read this entire interaction over again. Yeah. With the thought that Leandrin can't lie. Oh, now you're getting smart. Okay. And th- But sort of, because I also have a question about what happens to a black Aja. Like what happens to an Aes Sedai if they break the oath that they took yep. and lie? Okay. So what we know of the oaths, we know that the oaths are like speak no word that is not true. Yeah. And all we know is that the Aes Sedai are tied to those. So presumably... You just can't. We don't really know what that because means. Because here's the thing. We also know in their oaths, they say that they can't hurt other people unless it's for... Yeah, you know, in like self-defense, basically. In self-defense or protecting whatever. They're another person. So we've already seen Leandrin not follow through with that one. We've already saw her use the power to inflict pain. So it says to not use the one power as a weapon. Which she does. Depends on how you define a weapon. Same way, like, speak no word that is not true. Like, technically, you can lie, but not by lying. Yeah. You know? So it's like, how do you worm your way around the oaths to get what you want? Okay. Yeah, I would say that using it to torture an answer that you want out of somebody is weaponizing it. To to you. But that's the thing. That's like holding someone at, like, gunpoint or, like... I don't know. Yeah, and, and I'm not saying I don't disagree. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. just like that's the that's the catch okay. to it. Okay. Well, in any case, I went on the assumption that Leandrin can't lie. Okay. That's my assumption right now. Yeah. I guess that that would mean that Moraine has sent letters that concern Egwene and Nynaeve. Yeah. And the boys. Yeah. Who it was meant for. Is a whole nother thing. Yeah, like she never says that they were sent to me. No, no, never. Yeah. They've been sent to the White Tower, but that's it. And then it gets, you know, flipped as a question on them. So it's like instant, change the subject. We're not going to talk about that letter anymore. Yeah. Kind of thing. And so Egwene goes, yep, let's help them. And Nynaeve is much more skeptical, which is good, because I am very skeptical about everything that's <laughs> yeah, happening right turns now. Turns out. <laughs> and she's wanting to know how Leandra knows all this and why she cares about helping them. And Nynaeve says, I thought you didn't even like Maureen. Yeah, don't you guys like hate each other? Yeah. And then... Leandrin goes on a whole rant about working with people you don't like to serve a cause. Yeah, and like, in fairness, she has a good point. No. So, (laughs) this whole thing is sketchy fact number three. Okay. Because it is too vague and very defensive. Okay. She doesn't answer any question here. She doesn't actually have an answer for what's happening. Or like, how she knows or why she cares or anything. So she goes, you know, to serve a cause, you sometimes have to work with people you don't like. And I agree with her on that. But That's I my thing. But I think that this whole to serve a cause is very... It's because I hate you, Maureen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I was going to say it's very evil sounding. Oh, okay, That's like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, like the yeah. whole like... Oh, it's for the greater good. But the it's whole, for the greater evil because she's a bad the, guy. The cause is, you know, 
so the dark one can win and I can have all this power so I deal with people I don't like. So that's the cause, not like, let's go save Rand? No, and definitely okay. not. Like, I just think, especially considering she's red Aja yeah. and hates men. Okay. There is no fucking way, number one, <laughs> that Moraine is trusting a red Aja yeah. to help her. What if she has no other choice and she's like in a tight bind? No? Moraine not, not is working it? alone. Okay. All right. Always. Or unless the letter was actually meant for Swan yep. or Varen. But then how does like Leandrin get a hold of that Intercepted. letter? Intercepted. Intercept the, pe- the pigeon, whatever it is. Yeah, whatever it blasted is. Blasted out of the sky the with a messenger. fireball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually have no idea. <laughs> okay. But I don't buy this. So then she turns it back on Nynaeve. And this is the defensive part. She goes, would you not work with someone you dislike to save your friends? And instant, like that instant defense and putting it back on someone else. Yeah. That is super sketchy. Okay. So Leandrin also says that the danger comes from Shale Ghoul and they are being hunted like they were before. Okay. And if the girls go with her, some of the dangers may be eliminated. But don't ask her how because she can't say okay so can't or won't doesn't really matter sketchy fact number four okay the fact so that this is like them how or why they're gonna be <laughs> helpful if they come like yeah that, i'm sorry so nope. this is just like a lot of projecting because then if leandrin is black aja and she's like oh the danger is coming from shale ghoul then it's like it's actually coming from me to you yeah so she's the danger yeah okay and yeah. let's not ignore the fact that right before all this occurred min was like hey guys i think we're all, all in, in danger. danger okay yeah yeah right let's ignore that fact then. yeah totally okay cool so Egwene says yeah totally we're gonna come and then nynaeve says okay but where are we going she goes tom and head idiots don't you know that's where the party's at turns out (laughs) and Nynaeve just keeps (laughs) asking like why us and Leandrin says that they are connected to these men and she doesn't understand it yeah okay okay maybe so she won't answer any more questions though and Nynaeve finally agrees to go okay so Leandrin says meet me at the Ogier Grove one hour before sunset, and I immediately went, ah, oh, fuck. Oh, you got that? It was, uh, oh, immediately. Way gay time. I went, oh, yeah. no. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is such an emotional roller coaster yeah. for me. You're having a tough time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the ways, not the ways, the ways, not the ways. And I just am over it. So, <laughs> so. Well, at least it wasn't like, oh, we can't do the ways. It's portal stone time. Yeah. So. <laughs> Like, that's a positive. Yeah, I guess so. So, anyway, Nynaeve brings up that they aren't allowed to leave without permission. And then Leandrin says, you have my permission. But don't tell anyone. There are Black Aja everywhere. So you don't think that it's like Black Aja everywhere. It's like Black Aja right here facing you. Yeah, and that's sketchy fact number five. Okay. Because to be like... (laughs) Don't tell anyone. And then scares the shit out of them. Yeah. Into like not saying anything to anyone. Yeah. Because she really doesn't want anyone to know that this is happening. Okay. And it's not coming from Maureen. There's <laughs> no way. This is a good time for like John Mulaney. Be like, don't go to the second location. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> never. Never go to the second location. So Leandrin leaves. Yeah. And Egwene is worried that she's a red Aja and might know about Ran. And Nynaeve says that she doesn't think Leandrin knows about Rand in that way. She doesn't get that feeling. But she doesn't get, number one, why she's working with Moraine or why she wants to help. And Nynaeve says she knows Leandrin can't lie and wonders if what they heard was actually what they thought they heard. So definitely, probably not. Good point. Nynaeve this is where she earns points in my book, where she loses some of those points that she earns. Because she does nothing when about it. She decides to leave anyway. Yeah. Like she yeah. has all these good points. There's no way she wants to help a man. I'm confused as to why she's working with Maureen. That doesn't make sense. I don't know if we actually just heard what we thought we heard. It was all very vague and defensive. Yeah. Like those are all very good points, Nynaeve. Yeah, she does. She and does then a good she job goes, there. Now let's get to planning for our trip. <laughs> well, I guess we gotta go. Yeah. What about that whole thing, like, if you know you're walking into a trap, then you're not really walking into a trap? 
Does that hold any weight here? Uh, not when it's a danger trap. Oh, shoot. And you're going to I get... forgot about Min's danger trap. Yeah. <laughs> Min? And clearly, yeah. Oh, no. Because Min's gonna, like, yeah. danger, danger, oh, danger. Yeah, it's dangerous. And then she doubles down. We'll get to that. But yeah. Min doubles down to the she whole does. danger. So. And then we ignore it. Yeah. So Elaine and Min come busting in. They were listening through the listening hole. The spy From hole. the other room. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, obviously. <laughs> and Nynaeve tells them that they can't tell anyone. And Min's like, I'm going with you. And Elaine's like, me too. Because Min is sick of the brown Aja asking her a million questions and to read everyone. Yeah. And Elaine wants an adventure. She wants to go on an adventure. Yeah. But to be fair, this is the exact same thing that Egwene did I was when say, she was leaving Emmons Field. And Field. even Egwene thinks about that. Yeah, yeah. And so it's interesting. And it's a whole back and forth. Yeah. Plus Elaine wants Rand. Yep. If Egwene is going to leave him lying loose. Yep. She's going to scoop him up. She's going to try. Yeah. Even if mother doesn't approve. Yeah. So Min says that they are all for sure part of the pattern. Ah, part of the pattern. Yeah. Do we end our episode now? No. (laughs) And it's clear that the danger is all around them. So therefore they need to go. Oh, yeah. And like the danger is (laughs) solidified. Because they decided that they're going to go. Yeah. And then they're still going to go. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So Nynaeve... But it's to save Rand. So here's yeah. a question. If Leandrin is Black Aja and she's leading the girls into some trap to do who knows what with, like, you know... No clue. Yeah. Does Rand have literally anything to do with this plan? Probably. Does Leandrin no. know about Rand who's been, like, disappeared from the pattern for the last four months and then spontaneously came back in or is this this like some big ploy that landrin's like ah eh, something about the boys no 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 i think okay you just made me think of something sure because if she is a dark friend and yep. let's say she's working with baalzaman yeah for example right so baalzaman and celine both knew when rand traveled to portal stone to portal stone world yes they were aware of that happening, yeah, and whether or not they caused it to happen, because they, Egwene saw them standing over Rand yes. when he was sleeping. Yeah. So whether or not they made that happen, or followed him there, or what, they were made, they were aware of it. Okay. And so, like the first time, the first time. Okay. And so it's possible, Baalzaman slash Celine slash Lanfear, sure, also is aware of the travel. This time. This time. And then like the four month time lapse. No idea. Yeah. So yeah. it does seem like Leandrin gets her orders from somebody else. Oh, for sure. Because She's not acting of her own volition here. Like this is. This isn't, this isn't like Leandrin's plan. There's like plan. literally a 4% chance. Yeah. That this, she's actually okay, and this is actually something Maureen wants. Okay, 4%. Yeah. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. Four. <laughs> okay. okay, so let's move on. Because what happened Ni- to all that one in a million stuff? <laughs> Nynaeve sets about making plans for leaving, and Egwene thinks about Rand and says, Hold on, you wool-headed idiot. I'll help you somehow. Yeah. So. So what do you think about this whole Elaine wants to scoop up Rand business? Yeah. Makes are sense. you are you cool with it? Yeah. You think it's gonna happen? Well, they're gonna get married, so it probably okay. has to happen at some point if she's gonna marry him. Okay. All right. I forgot that you said that. Yeah. Okay. From the beginning. I from said the that. beginning, you did. Well, at the very beginning, you're like, oh, somebody from Edmonds Field, probably. Yeah. Like two rivers. Maybe. But now she's like all into Rand. So. She does seem pretty heavily into Rand. Yeah. So. Okay. Chapter thirty nine, flight from the White Tower, and then if I wasn't like a hundred percent sure. About the whole ways thing because of the Ogier Grove. Yeah. The picture of this chapter is the Avenda Sora leaf. Yeah. And I just went, God That means damn way it. Gates. God damn it. You know what? To be fair, skip into the end of the chapter. At least it's a quick journey. Okay. So we fast forward to these women leaving and heading out to the Ogier Grove. They have changed out of their Aes Sedai training dresses and are in their like fancy noble lady dresses that they showed up in yeah and min stays in her breeches and she acts as their servant yeah 
They've also packed like crazy, thinking that it's going to be months before they get to Tom and Head, and it'll be like winter and cold, and how much food are we going to need? They stole from the kitchens and stuff. Yeah, and reasonably, that makes sense. Yeah. So they get to the stables without being caught, and Nynaeve acts like she owns the freaking place. She demands that the stable boy get their horses ready for them. And he's a little shocked because he says he was only told two. Yeah. A novice and an accepted, not four, because Leandrin prepared. That, that makes sense. That's like good planning. Yeah. But they are still like, oh, she didn't think we could get her own horses. But it's like she has a plan. Yeah. But you know what I'm most excited about? What? Bella. Yeah, yeah. Bella's coming. Yeah, we got Bella. Yeah. Good. And so... She's that... a very well-traveled pony. Oh, she sure is. <laughs> what a good She's been pony. everywhere. Good horsey. So Nynaeve threatens this guy, though, and says, you'll get Leandrin's healing if you blah, blah, blah. Anyways, and so he gets all four horses ready for them. And they leave, and Nynaeve barks at him not to tell anyone. And then Elaine gives him a coin. Yeah. Because she says, mother says a stick in honey works better than a stick alone. I mean, that's not a bad saying. It's all right. Yeah. Except that they were just, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's not really what Leandrin and Nynaeve were going for. Yeah. More they like the mean approach. They were going for the scary, the bullying. scared for your life. Not, here's money to be quiet. Mm, okay. You know? But they also have no trouble at all at the gate because the guards are not concerned about people leaving. They're obviously more concerned about people coming in. Yeah. And it's not an empty city. Like Tar Valen is very busy. Yes. Yeah. So they also don't stand out at all. No, they're like totally, they fit in. Yeah. And they even sort of run into other Aes Sedai and they only are seen for their clothes and aren't recognized at all. Yeah. So they get out and come up to the Ogier Grove. Leandrin jumps out of the bushes nah. on her horse <laughs> <laughs> with a pack horse and she is pissed off. She's like, oh, I told you not to tell anyone. And then she says that she had arranged for Min and Elaine to be taken care of. Not in like a murdered way, but it like really in a... It really sounds like a murder way. <laughs> Seriously, though, because she goes, well, four can take the journey as well as two since they are here. But then she tells them, had you remained in the tower tonight, you might not have lived the night. Yeah, because the Black Aja is going to get you. Ooh. No, she was going to off him. Really? Okay. Oh, yeah. Again, so you really heavily have to invest into this whole I really Leandrin do. is Black oh, Aja yeah. thing. I'm really in it. Okay. And if this is something that she this can't lie about. This is like really about, bad. Okay. Yeah. She can't lie about it. The only thing is she says may and she says might a yes. lot in her sentences, which I think is the tricksy I said I way to speak. Yeah, might happen. Might, Never know. Might. Oh, we have no idea if it will or not. Yep. That's the tricksy way to speak. Okay. But she says that she arranged for them to be taken care of. So if Leandrin is a good guy, like if she's not, and there is some plan to get them to Tom and Head for some reason, mm -hmm. it makes sense too that the two remaining would have to be taken care of somehow yeah. to like be protected. Yeah. So like if she's not, not like the worst possible thing. over their head. And knocked, yeah. in the, <laughs> knocked yeah. in the head and then dragged out of there. Well, like, you got to remember, too, because it's been stated in these chapters, Elaine is the daughter heir to Andor. Yeah. And if she just got murdered in the White Tower, that would be a shit show. Yes. Like, even, I assume, for the Black Aja to yeah. do that, that would be, like, catastrophically not a good idea. Yeah. Cause, like, I think she would make them look like they disappeared with Nynaeve and Egwene. Like, is that like better or worse? Like, they ran away together. And then they're just, like... You know, runaways from the White Tower or something? Yeah. So like all together? Well, it would look like it was of Elaine's own volition. But then like, why would Elaine, the daughter heir to the throne of Andor, run off? Well, it'll look like all these four women went on and it like went out together. Okay. That's what I think that this the was, taking it care was of. meant to yeah. look like. And now that's what's actually happened. So Leandrin's like, whatever. Yeah. yeah. I guess it's all good. Yeah. So. so they go through this locked gate in the grove and Leandrin has the key to it and Nynaeve is like confused as to why they're going deeper into this forest 
and not taking a bridge out of Tarvalin. Yeah, so like if you ever see the map of Tarvalin, it's yeah. just like literally in the middle of this, like in the city. It's on so, an island. Yeah. So like to leave, you have it's to like, take a gotta bridge out of here. get on a boat here. or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's an eagle in the forest. Yeah. Yeah. No. So, oh, ride dragons. Like a giant eagle. <laughs> You're going to ride dragons? You're going to climb on the dragon's back and fly to Tarvalin. There you go. No. Fly out of there. Fly out of there to, to Tom, Tom and Head. And head. Yeah. No. <laughs> so this is when they see the way gate and I just went, yep, of course. This has been an emotional roller coaster for me, this whole way gate business, and I'm over it. Yeah. So Leandrin plucks the special leaf and the way gate opens and I went, all right, so this is happening. Yeah, I was going to say like... The last couple times we've been yeah, around Waygates, I know. people are just like whipping these leaves off willy nilly, no prep time, <laughs> no like, hey, is everybody ready? Yeah. Like just like, ah, take this, take the leaf off, let's go. Yeah. These things that people haven't gone in for like a hundred years because they're cursed and a murder monster cloud lives in it. Yeah. And people are just like, ah, time to go, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. We're doing this. Yeah. So there's no black wind waiting for them, and there is the dull silvery reflection thing yeah in this one yeah did you expect the black wind to possibly be here no because rand's not here and you think that the black wind thing is, is somehow for rand. looking for rand okay uh, so, uh-huh yep well your theory holds up so far because of the fact that it is not where rand is not so <laughs> you're not wrong <laughs> so far okay so Leandrin says that she must go in last and she's like eyeing the woods as if somebody might be following them. And do you think someone's actually following or is she just like doesn't want to be caught? No idea, but it's an interesting tidbit that I need to put out there. Okay, it, sure. You know. Do you have any follow up to that? Nope. Like I get the whole, I need to go last because she does the whole leaf thing. Yeah, I thought and, like, that she was going to like lock them in there or something. <laughs> but they could just like use the leaf from the other side. I don't know. Maybe she thinks they don't know how to use it okay or she's gonna like magic that'd be like the worst plan because <laughs> i know has been there and i knew has been there before so i know yeah or she could like magically lock them in somehow oh yeah with magic gotcha there you go but no she does go in after them okay so the gwayne heads in a little too quickly but <laughs> well here's the here's the line oh. that i said the fun little oh, line yeah? It says she had moved before thinking. Yeah. And it's like this entire journey is, is all of you moving before you're without thinking. Without thinking. Yeah. That is very true because I didn't mention it, you know, before, but if somebody who you don't know or like and the person that you know and like doesn't trust or like this person. Yeah. So the Moraine to Leandrin. Right. So if Moraine shows up at their door and says... I need you to. We need to help Rand. We gotta go. We gotta go. You go. Because you have a history with this person of like... Not murdering not you. Not murdering <laughs> you. Not screwing you over. Not screwing Rand over. Yeah. That you can visibly see. Yeah. Right? She's kept you safe. She's fought for you. She's helped train you. Yeah. Like, that's somebody that you know and have a relationship with and makes sense. This person who you don't know at all, yeah. and the person that you know and trust doesn't like or trust this person. Yeah. She shows up and says, we gotta go. <laughs> and you go, mm, this doesn't seem right, but okay. And then that person says, but you can't trust anyone. Yeah. Your first instinct isn't to go to like the Amerlin or even Sherry Amsterdam, like your mistress of novice you think is a Black Aja. Yeah. If you think that Black Aja are real <laughs> and could be anywhere, yeah. why wouldn't you immediately think... Go like spot check it with somebody. This person here, like, might be actually be the one. But you forgot the most important part. If she says, don't tell anybody because the Black Aja is going to murder you, if you tell anyone, the Black Aja is going to murder you. Right. So it's safer to not tell anyone and just go with her. I just... Through the ways to a place where there's a war going on. <laughs> For a reason that yeah. makes literally no sense. Yeah, she hasn't answered any questions. But, you know... Okay, so I kind of get why you're all sketched out about this. It's like... it's It's gotten to a point where, like, I finished reading <laughs> this and I just went... Whoa. Like, I get this furthers the story and it's interesting and clearly these women are thinking quite emotionally yeah, yeah. about this and not logically at all because 
if somebody shows up at my house and is like, we gotta go. <laughs> Not even just somebody. It's yeah. like you're, 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 uh, uh, someone you hate. Yeah. <laughs> someone that you know that you trust hates and, them. And who like hates men and wants them all murdered. Yeah. And is like, oh man, we gotta go save your dad. And yeah. it's like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm going to go ask my mom first yeah. because... No, you can't do it. You got to come with me right now. Yeah. Oh, man. And they totally had time. Oh, yeah. To go and be like, this really weird thing just happened. They like prepped supplies and got their horses and packed and all these things. No. Okay. Okay. So, so let's that, go I through the to, ways. I just had to voice my frustration. This was like, you know how I used to say that's my Wheel of Time therapy session? Yep. This... Back to the therapy. This is okay. my Wheel of Time therapy session where I just need to be like, this is terrible and bad news bears and I hate it. Yeah, so she had moved before thinking. Let's continue. So, it's the ways, like we remember, darker than dark and then even more dark. Yep. And they take off into the ways. It's the same as before. And they follow... The white line on the ground to a guiding and Leandrin takes out a parchment and reads it quickly. Yeah. Well, and she puts it away before anyone can see what's on it. Yeah, it's like her little instruction manual to translate the Ogier script. Uh Uh-huh. You know who knows how to travel the ways? Uh, Loyal and other Ogier. Yeah. Is that what you were going to say? Mm-hmm, sure. Yeah. Sure, she got some instructions from some Ogier. Yes. No, Trollocs. Okay. And Fades. Yeah. And Fane. Because. And Dark Friends. Okay. So. And Bale's one. Shoot. So that's how she has her little instruction manual? Yes. And that's mm. why she won't let anyone see it. Okay. Boom. That it's like, hey, Leandrin, these are the instructions to get to Tom and Head, XOXO, Bale's Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's instructions. Yeah. And because you know how like the Trollocs have like Trolloc script on some of the guidings yeah because they figured out how to use the whole system yeah that was like presumably because like it was overseen by probably someone smarter than trollic though yes exactly okay and so that's what's going on here and that's how she knows how to use the guidings okay because because she's gotten in with the dark friends i get it yeah yeah so they carry on and on and on and on over bridges and to more guidings and to islands and stuff and we get this whole recap about what the ways are all about, and it's exactly the same. And so Egwene notes that she can actually still sense Sidar yeah. in here, but she can also sense the taint. Yes, not like the taint of Sidine. This is like the taintiness of the ways. Right, which is, I think, the same thing. Yeah. Because it was created by the male channelers. Yeah, yeah. And so it was created with... Sidine, which is tainted. Yeah, it's just like it's not the maybe I didn't phrase that right. It's she doesn't feel the taint through Sidar. No, like but she, she does, senses yeah. that it's there. Yeah, the same way that Ran feels the taint on Sidine. So. Yes. Okay. So Leandrin says it's time to stop and tells them to parcel out the food from the pack horse, and she sits and waits for her food to be brought to her. <laughs> yeah, and then. They ask Leandrin, like, what they should do if they encounter the Black Wind. Yeah, this is funny. Because Moraine said it can't be killed or hurt. And then Leandrin says, don't even think about using the One Power unless I tell you to. Because you would go mad as a man if you even tried to channel here. Like and we we kind of do know for Moraine, like, don't channel unless you absolutely have to. Yeah. Because weird shit happens. Yeah. So she also says that Moraine does not know as much as she thinks she knows. And she says that with like a smile. Because if the black one appears, she'll deal with it. Deal with it. So do you think this is like an actual like Leandrin? Because we also know that the black wind will like kill Trollocs. Yeah. Like we know that the black wind and like the dark friends and shadow spawn, they don't get along. Fane is the exception to all that craziness. Yeah. It's also been presumably... Two to three months. Yeah. You know, since the whole disappearance yep. of Rand and them at, and, and you trying to use the ways. And I think it's probably safe to say that whatever is happening in the ways with the Black Wind 
and Dark Friends and Beelzemon and the Dark One, I think that they've sort of figured out what's happened with Fane and I think that they're figure they figured it out. Okay. And so I'm gonna keep going, steamrolling yeah. with my theory that they know now how to control the Black Wind, and so Leandrin's not concerned about it. Okay. And that's why they have Leandrin carrying people wow okay the ways because now they have even more control over it because they have a way to like bypass smash and shin right because okay. that was the only real threat to people yeah 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 right because like, that's yeah. like how that ogier went mad was yeah. because of the the black wind because even wind. if it's like dark and you can't see anything you can get through that yeah. but the black wind kills stuff so right. okay so that's pretty huge yeah 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 so min says that no man is worth this, even Rand. And then she asks <laughs> Egwene, what if Rand doesn't marry you after all this? What if he marries some other woman? Or Elaine? Or me? Yeah. And Elaine laughs and says that mother would never approve. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And then Egwene <laughs> thinks that Rand is going crazy and thinks again about how there has to be a way to stop that madness. Yeah. So it's that's kind of like just a... stemming off of, remember what I said before about how Egwene is somehow going to try to figure <laughs> this out? Yeah, it's yeah. It's still on her mind and she's still... Some way to like save Rand? Yeah. Cool. She's still thinking about it. You know, it's kind of like a, not on the topic of like her somehow saving Rand from going mad. It's a weird thing where Egwene's like, oh, I can't have Rand or I don't want him. And so he's nobody, never gonna marry. nobody should have Rand. Yeah. Because he's going to go mad. And her people. I think that it's not just yeah. like a selfish jealousy thing. But it's weird that she's like equivocating, I don't want to be married to Rand, as nobody should be married to Rand at all. Yeah. I don't think Is that's it, weird. Okay. I think it makes sense. I Even think, though Elaine's like all about this? Yeah. I think that's because Elaine doesn't know that he can channel and he's going to go mad. What about And Min? potentially hurt people. I don't know about Min. Okay. Well, Min's I, been like, you can't get away from me, farm boy. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah. I think that Egwene's whole thing is just that she knows she can't marry him. Yeah. Because he's going to go crazy and hurt people. Okay. And she doesn't think anyone could marry him because he's going to go crazy and hurt people. Okay. So not like a jealousy thing no. or something? Okay. So Elaine says that if Egwene is silly enough to throw Rand away, <laughs> then she wants him. Yeah. He is so interesting. And even though I said I don't typically marry men, well, except for those greens who marry their warders. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's okay. interesting. Then we get that in the ways, Egwene dreams of Beelzebub, who is laughing at her. And we also get that his burned face is almost healed to show a passage of time. <laughs> there you go. Yes. I like that. Thank you. <laughs> but I also have a just a little quick side note about sure. how it's been a long time since Rand or any of the boys have had a Beelzebub dream. It's been a while. Yep. Yeah. Since the whole Heron branding in the Portal Stone. Yeah. Bit world, right? Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. Where Rand had That's it. where Rand had it. And we don't know about the other boys. Right. We haven't heard it anyway. Yeah. So. It does kind of seem like the interest level of Beelzebub may have dropped off with Perrin and Matt a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's clear it's Rand. Yeah. 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 So. Okay. And yeah. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Hey. How so about that? eventually after something like two days they see the white line on the ground leading to another way gate and Leandrin smiles and says we are here. I have brought you at last to where you need to go. And this seems bad. It does. It's only it's only seems bad if you're assuming that Leandrin is Black Aja. This is bad. If she's a good guy, then this is great. No. <laughs> this is so bad. There is like literally no possibility that this is good. And this is why I said at the beginning, this is why I'm really, really happy that you had to stop and we had to record this episode before you can read on because this is such a big awesome cliffhanger of you have no idea what's going to happen next. Yeah. And now you get to go read. Yes, I know. <laughs> so I think we talked about most of the things that I had to touch on. Yeah. Here. And yeah. so I really do just sort of want to wrap up and go. Yeah, I think that's about it because there wasn't tons that happened. It was definitely like a, we're going up this the roller coaster moment. This was a speculation 
episode for yeah. me. Uh, really, really heavy prediction wise, speculation wise, because we haven't had one of those in a little while. Yeah. Well, this is like you're sitting at the top of the roller coaster ready to fall down. Uh huh. So why don't we go do that? Okay. okay. Sounds good. And I'm going to say, like Min. Ah, yes. This is part of the pattern now. It's part of the pattern. Thank you for listening to this episode. The Wheel Weaves is hosted by Danny and Brett, edited by Danny, produced by Danny and Brett with Derek Benton, Benjamin, Kyle Smith, Joe Lott, Passion Socks, Moltude, and Mozyme. Music by Audionautics.com. If you'd like bonus content, like bonus episodes, outtakes, Q&As, more fun Wheel of Time talk, early access, cool stickers and keychains, and also to support us making great content, visit us at patreon.com slash thewheelweavespodcast. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram and Twitter at The Wheel Weaves Podcast. We love interacting with our listeners. Plus, don't forget to rate, subscribe, and tell a friend about us because referrals really are the best compliment. We'd really love for you to come over and join our Discord channel for some spoiler or spoiler-free discussions. You can find the links at our Twitter page as well as on our Patreon page. Thanks again for tuning in because this really is part of the pattern now.